me, Ron Funches. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for watching the podcast. Thank you for being my friend or a person who admires me or just gets a chuckle off of what I do or stumbled upon this and is going to turn very quickly. Uh, whatever reason you're watching the podcast, I really do appreciate it. And I hope if you do support me, come see me on the road. I'll be in Colorado in June. June 12th through the 15th, to be exact. June 12th, I'm in Basel, Colorado at the Contemporary Theater. June 13th through the 15th, you can find me in Denver, Colorado at one of my favorite clubs in the world, Comedy Works. I will also be continuing on the road in July. With July 20th, I'm opening for Portugal, the man in Portland, Oregon. And July 24th through the 26th, I'm in Helium Comedy Club at St. Louis, Missouri. 27th through the 28th, you'll find me in Indianapolis. Indiana at Helium Comedy Club. I will also be in Dania Point, Florida in August. I'm going to Portland again in Helium, September 26th to the 28th. And then Labs Comedy Club, Seattle, uh, the 20. 20- 5th and 26th of October. Watch season two. It's uh, available now. People love it. The only critiques I usually see are people saying they they wish they had more Ron and Joel and more episodes. So Luke, take that to heart. Season three, 28 episodes. Let's just do it. People need more stories. We need just silly, fun side stories. How come I had a wrestling league one week and then the next few weeks I through a show that was a bonanza it feels like there would have been some things in between but (laughs) i don't blame the writers i know the time constructions and shit that what they're working under uh twitch.tv ron underscore funches if you want to watch me play video games uh and then ron funch on instagram go ronfunches.com for all my tour dates and come see me other than that i hope you enjoy the podcast hi i hope you're feeling brave I hope you're feeling strong. Hope you're feeling loved. And I hope you're grateful for that love. I'm grateful for the love that's been shown to me this last two weeks as I've been struggling and dealing with a bit of depression and isolating myself as I was concerned and worried about this upcoming court dates dealing with, um, you know, and it's just been stressful and and difficult to deal with and you know and I appreciate everyone that reached out to me um, the day of and made sure I was supported but everybody who reached out and you know my assistant who made sure that she brought me an early Father's Day card my um just my long-term friends I won't name drop people but it's just it was an outpouring of love when I really truly needed it and I, and I just want to make sure I say that I appreciate that. Um, also, I want to say thank you uh, to my ex's defense team for being such big fans of the podcast and listening to so many hours. <laughs> I'm glad you guys. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you guys are feeling brave. <laughs> I know you are. Oh, it is wild. And I don't want to dive into any of this other than to talk about how my feelings and things of that nature and also to make sure I stay because sometimes they they go back and forth where they listen to my podcast so much and they say I either am slandering her and trying to stop her from working. So I just want to say out loud, please give her a job. Somebody, please. I would love that. That would be helpful. Um, and then they also then then they say that I'm talking about how I'm doing well on here and I'm doing okay. So that means that I wasn't affected by her actions. And I just want to say uh, that that I, that's absolutely not true. I've been not doing well in many ways, but I'm a father. I can compartmentalize. I do what I can to keep this shit on the road because I'm the only one uh, build time do. And guess who paid the rent for multiple households? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a stressful but a fun time. And I just want to say, man, if there's anything, lesson I learned through this week, if you are a uh, parent of a kid with, with special needs um a parent with a kid on the autism spectrum and they're getting towards um adult years make sure you get that conservatorship done right away um because i never thought i'd have to be arguing that my 
son with autism can't testify on his behalf on a restraining order that I'm trying to get. I didn't think that someone would ever argue with that. Um, I don't know if that's normal in the scope of being a lawyer. Um, I'm imagine, I mean, I know if I was a person and a father myself that maybe I'd have a hard time looking my own kid in the mirror. Well, at the same time, I'm trying to make special needs kids defend themselves in court. Um, but, you know, I guess everybody got to make money. And you got to do what you got to do to make your money. Uh, me, I tell jokes and be free and create things in my, my mind. And I guess you. Uh, try to tell the weakest among us and the, those who need the most help and support that they should testify and defend for themselves in court and that their father's opinion on that subject would not matter. So I guess, you know, different strokes, different folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it pissed me off, y'all. I had to sit there in court with my mouth just like, well, you, want, you, want, you want him? All right, let's bring him down. We'll bring his ass down, then. And you'll sit there and, 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 I mean, you probably won't feel a goddamn thing, apparently. But, uh, you know, that's where we are in this uh, current divorce, is that I am having to defend the fact <laughs> that I have a right to decide who comes into contact with my autistic son. Um and I find that ridiculous. The money stuff, it pales in comparison to all of that shit right now to me. So it is what it is. A person is only going to get weirder before it gets better. Um, but again, um, and through all of this, uh, lessons that I'm learning, in part through jujitsu, um, in part through friendship, is just, just lean into it. Don't be afraid of it. Take the hit. If you're going to take a hit, there's going to be money to spend. As much as they think, apparently, that I, I'm money driven, I'm 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 about protecting my son, and protecting both my sons, making sure that they have a amazing, wonderful lives where they know that their father cares about them, and that he did not attempt to abandon him or kick them out into the streets or um, was not concerned about him, no matter what type of. Uh, tell somebody else may try to spread uh, whom I'm talking of I will do not know <laughs> but uh, hypothetically um <laughs> uh, so it's just a weird th mix of like just emotions and um blessings that I did not expect and uh just I mean, I got a call from my first ex um, about this, and I never thought, you know, we didn't necessarily end on the best of circumstances, even though that was 20 years ago. Um, and But I didn't know how. I thought she might be celebrating and enjoying my downfall. Um, but to hear how much she was concerned about Malcolm and how um, and she told me things that Malcolm had confided in her uh, about my current ex that I did not know um, and, and things that I, information I sh sorely needed. And, and it let us have a conversation about um, the end of our relationship that we needed to have. And I think it allows us to kind of both move on forward in a, a peaceful I mean, I don't know if we'll ever be like friend friends or anything like that, but um just hearing her say that she's proud of me and respects the work that I've done for our son. And um, it means a lot for me. It means, and it genuinely gives me hope that one day, maybe 20, 30 years from now, I'll have that conversation with my, my, my current ex, but I'm not going to hold my breath for it. I'm not going to wait around for it. I'm just going to live my life and operate the, the best way I know how. Um, so as much as, as people keep trying to, intimidate me to stop doing this podcast and um continue to survey me and watch me and <laughs> looking for god knows what when all i'm just trying to do is get divorced they acting like this is a goddamn narco fucking case or i'm 
<laughs> they plan to put a Rico on your boy. <laughs> and I'm just like, can I just not be married to this lady, please? And protect my family, protect my sons, and not have them, you know, on a whim be threatened to move into a different country and or you know, I would be told that they would be emotionally isolated and, and, and abused, you know, like nah not on my watch <laughs> not happening i will i don't care the money is one thing but my sons my family my peace you're not taking it from me not happening so i've lost friends because of this i've gained some friends because of this i've gained so much perspective and wisdom because of this i have no malice in my heart even for this woman obviously i have no love but no malice i just I want to be left alone. And I think that that, that is a, a, a feeling that a lot of people have. And a feeling that people take advantage of when they're, um, you know, whatever their issues may be. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh. I just want to be left alone and be allowed to pursue my dreams and my goals and be a good dad and raise my son how I see fit and put him in a preschool and get him on a track to, cause he's so smart and so fucking kind and so sweet. And I, my biggest fears in all of this, if we're, if this ends up, I mean, I imagine they won't want to, they, this episode, they probably won't pick. But <laughs> since they pick an episodes and they listen to it anyway, and I got to apparently pay for all of it, uh, I might as well just say that my true concerns are just that this person um, lets their emotions and their anger dictate their behavior to the nth degree. And then if they feel hurt or they feel wrong, um, and she attacks and she attacks and attacks until she knows you're hurt until she knows, I mean, they have it in their thing. They're just, they're mad that I have my home and that, that they don't have a similar place currently. And I've done what I can to try to compromise and try to, um, prep and help and be like hey let's get this and let's you know you're gonna get a chunk of money so you know maybe go get some employment and we can you know talk about what help you actually need but it ain't none of that it's a search and destroy and so um if you see me out and about and you're like, man, is he doing well my answer is uh probably not that much but you know um, my life is beautiful no other, otherwise. My only stress is this. Other than that, my health is good. My wealth is currently good. My family is good. Um, my career is good. My friends are good. I got a nice girlfriend right now. Like everything is is copacetic and beautiful except for this, you know, person that doesn't want to let you go, wants to keep you in, in and that's abusive to me. In my opinion, I guess I'll make sure I state that. Um, and we'll see what happens, you know? I might be getting divorced for the next five, six years. So if you guys hate these um, check-ins, I apologize. <laughs> but they might be going in through the new year. So we're going to, but we, you know, I just want to make sure no matter what, cross the, cross those T's, dot those I's. I want to make sure my son's taken care of and, 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 you know, just doing well and knows that his son, lo that his dad loves him, that his brother loves him and that we are there for him. And, um, you know, and everything else is fine. We'll just take care of it. We'll take care of the money and everything else is good. I don't care about that. I just want to make sure my boys are good. Let's focus on the positive. Thank you again to all my friends who reached out to me. Thank you to my friend who came to court with me. Thank you to um, my ex for giving me, my first ex for giving me a call and, and checking in on me and checking in on Malcolm and um, and just making sure that we're all okay. And I really appreciate that. Um, and I 
I guess I'll see you guys next week. We got a great episode this week with another. I mean, this is an episode I needed to have. Um, a man who I love comedically, I love as a person, a man who went through his own divorce uh, that did not seem to go that well for him and easy and to be able to see him come out the other side and have new love um, and, and perspective and happiness uh, gives me hope for me. So enjoy this episode with my friend, Andy Richter. Enjoy it. Hey, Andy. Hi, Ron. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit late. No one needs to know that. Why know. did you out well, that? Because you know, because I don't like being late. Okay. You know, um, I like being on time. You pride yourself on being on time. Mm, I mean, I'm not like neurotic about it, but mm-hmm. you know. And I like you. I like you. Know, you know, if I didn't care about you, I would then it would be like, hey, fuck them. <laughs> I don't wait 10, 15 minutes. What's the big deal? <laughs> I like that there's shifts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> believe you me. They're, they're strata. They're, they're, like, I don't want to do that to that guy, but oh, that guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> no, I, I used to, I, I mean, I'm when I used to work in... Uh, production in chicago you know i went to film school and i worked in production and there were a uh, company I, w- I worked as a production assistant mostly you know and then i started doing other stuff but when i was a production assistant uh in those days you would get petty cash and a lot of time I, I mean i don't know like if you didn't have a car or if they didn't like sometimes they didn't want you to use a car you just use cabs and in those days the Receipts were just handwritten receipts. And if you tipped a, a ta- cab driver enough, he'd just give you like 10 blank receipts. Mm. So the people that were mean to me, <laughs> I would just, you know, oh, I went on a few extra trips, you know, mm. and I just would rip them off. But the people that were nice to me, you know, I would never do that, you know. <laughs> I have morals. I. But if cannot, you're shitty to me, I'll, yes. I'll steal your money. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy a selective moral code. Oh, absolutely. It's the best. And there has to be consequences for prick behavior. Yeah. You know, and for the exploitation of, you know, the bottom rung of the labor, you know, of the workforce. Yes. There has to be a consequence for it, which is I will steal your money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing for sure. If you if you are a low level employee of a big corporation, you should be stealing from them. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I mean, e- unless they're really nice to you, then you know, still less. If they're less. treating you well, yeah, 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 you should. But if they're jerks and rude. Didn't yeah, it makes sense to me. I like it even now. I like funneling money away from corporations into like charities or things that are important to me. Right. And that feels like stealing. Right. One of my favorite things when I worked at the bank call center was finding ways to give money back to people. Yeah, yeah. Because the banks were truly like jerks and stealing from you and doing the, the whole. This is the you know this was before Obama changed those laws, but back then they'd have the like your available balance and your regular balance and then your uh, uh, money going out would go happen immediately but if you did a deposit the deposit would sit for they a could day hold and a half yeah, yeah. and so like, well, the money technically wasn't there and then they charge you $180 in fees and you'd see it over and over and I always hated it being on the other side of it because I'm like I will never be able to dig out of this hole I'm just going to get more fees and then when I worked at the bank and they were just straight up being like if the person is rich and has a lot of money give them their money back but if they don't fuck them and i'm just like no i'm gonna yeah yeah and I what sense does that make it makes no i just bet i mean not, not much business wise because then that bank went out of business like yeah so yeah they took on a lot of credit debt that they the first national have. bank of fuck them yeah <laughs> <laughs> It didn't work out for you, huh? Yeah, Sorry, buddy. suck it, Wachovia. <laughs> You're Wells Fargo's bitch now. <laughs> uh, Wachovia. Fuck you, Wachovia. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
How have you been? I've been pretty good. I've been yeah. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, it's been a little bit. Yeah, I've uh, I've had a, a lot of big life changes. Uh, got divorced. Got divorced. Got remarried. Got remarried. Got a uh, and and part of getting remarried was I have a new daughter because uh, I married somebody that already had a little a little baby mm-hmm. and uh, and I've ad- I adopted my stepdaughter so now I got a four year old. Oh wow! Yeah. So wow. I have uh, and then two, I didn't know that part of it. Yeah, I got two older kids. I got my yeah. son just graduated from USC. Yeah. Uh, he's twenty three, and then my daughter's graduating from high school you know in a minute and um she's 18 and then i got four yeah uh, we got similar lives we do we do oh you're back God. in the baby business yeah, too, aren't you? yeah yeah i got a 21 year old and a two-year-old yeah 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 I took one to a strip club whose first strip club <laughs> <laughs> yeah really yeah did you take him to the strip club yes and what i mean uh did you leave it? Give him some space, or no? Oh, it was me, him, oh. and my best friend Gabe, shoulder to shoulder. Oh, I can't, I can't do it. It was beautiful. Uh, I see. loved it because he was so sweet. And yeah, yeah. So you know, my son's on the spectrum, so he was a little different. He was just mostly like excited to come in, and he was like, "Ooh, Grand Theft Auto," and I was like. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I hope that doesn't give him too skewed, <laughs> skewed a representation of what's so supposed to happen. So he gave him the money, and then he beat him with a bat, and then he got his money back. And he drove a car through the front of the building. <laughs> <laughs> but he's on the spectrum, so it's okay. I explained it to him. Look. He's on the spectrum. You've got to cut him some slack. Well, he liked it. And he, I also, we went on a third. Thursday at 8 p.m. because right. I did not want it to be in too alluring to him. I wanted him <laughs> to see the nitty gritty right, of right. it. And um, also, yeah, and I mean, yeah, that's 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 the family hour. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. it was like four people. Most of yeah. the strippers were on their phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! They walk around, but he had fun. He'd introduce himself. One of them was found out his birthday, and they let him touch his her butt. And he and so I got to see him touch his first butt, which is what you want to see. Wow! And he did it like this. <laughs> like what? What was that? Like was that that's like the outlining butt. her butt? Cheeks? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, dude. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Warmed her heart. <laughs> And how was he afterwards? Was he like he was just ready to go? He yeah, was yeah. Like, he was there for about an hour, and then he was just like, "Let's go get food." Yeah, and that was it. And then I he's asked got, him, "He's got it right." Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I asked her, "I was like, what was your favorite part of the trip?" And he was like, "The jazz festival." And I was like, <laughs> "Oh, good yeah, guy. yeah, yeah, yeah." Yeah, I I never was like, I never was really I like strip clubs. I was never that because just to me it was like. You know, like the notion of just going and getting horny somewhere mm-hmm. with no release. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like let's go to this club where you, the drinks are really expensive, and you get to look at food and get really hungry, and then you have to leave. Yeah, you know, like I yeah. just like I don't. I mean, I don't mean to equate women with food. No, but we. But get you know, it. it's like it, it triggers this kind of primal urge. Yeah. And then it's but and especially like like I'm, I I once went with. Well, um, you don't. I mean, it's like you don't like getting tickled. It's like you know, it's like getting tickled. We well, yeah, have. What's the payoff of tickling? There is none. <laughs> <laughs> this is a you've trapped me into a tickle party you? this is a tickle trap you lured me into your house and now I'm gonna get tickled that's what I brought you here oh, no. for those socks are for a reason <laughs> no I I once I, I went with um, I had already been in Los Angeles uh, like working in comedy and, and doing stuff, but I hadn't, like I had, wasn't making any money at it, but I had like done comedy in Chicago and it was living in LA and all my high school friends, uh, one of my best friends from high school had his bachelor party in Las Vegas. It was all these guys coming out from Illinois and for some reason, like all my friends ended up working in banks, Mm. like they all were bankers and, uh, we, 
we met up in Vegas. I drove out, and like at the t- like, I really had like forty bucks, like budgeted for gambling uh, for the whole weekend. So it was like nickel slots, you know. So it was. It's like when you go to Vegas and you totally broke. It's a bummer, you know? yeah. But um, <clears throat> at a certain point, like all my friends were like, uh, and I think I might have. I think I might have. I, I might have been engaged to my ex-wife at the time, um, but. I, they all, like, there was a certain point where they were going to go to the strip club. And I just was, I just was like, I don't, I don't really want to go and sit around with my high school friends having boners. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I didn't. Yeah. So I ended that's up. for like elementary school. I, I, yeah, I guess, yeah. you know. Well, that's yeah. what we did. In like a basement. Our first sleepovers, we would, you would, a bunch of eight-year-olds watching pornography. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow, so we were all eight. You don't need to make that face. Yeah, like, no, but I like mean, some of us weren't eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a couple were seven, and that's fucked up. <laughs> this poor seven year old <laughs> taking advantage of. No, I'm just amazed at the access to porn. But that's you're younger than me too, mm-hmm. so the access to porn was different. Yeah, it was like we were at a hotel. It was a hotel party. And so you could just order porn with the room. Wow. But we got caught. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it didn't. Wow. Yeah. But I agree with you about strip clubs just in the fact that, like, I'm a chatter. I like chatting. Yeah, yeah. And so you don't get good chatting you know, when no. I'm at a strip club. They no. try to lie to you and be phony. And and now it's also fun. Although this last time was fun is that because it was like they would be acting. And then I'm like, oh, I'm an actor. Let's act together. Right, right. You know? And so then we would just, I would just go with whoever they wanted. And this lady was just trying to be so, like, thuggish. And she was like, I'm gaudy. And then I saw that she had a tattoo of Buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls on her (laughs) thigh. And I was like, you're a fucking nerd. (laughs) (laughs) Did you say that to Yeah. And I go, what's your favorite anime? (laughs) And then we just talked about anime. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and I was like, you're, you I'm can't. Not really gaudy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not really gaudy. <laughs> also, if you're gonna pick somebody, don't pick gaudy. Yeah. So you know. yeah, for <laughs> gaudy, You'd be Tony Soprano. You know? <laughs> Come on, gaudy. Yeah. So we're not a very alluring stripper name. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and then on that trip too, when when they went to the strip club, I went to, I went to see, um, an old jazz singer that like you know uh, Louis Prima and Keely. Do you know I love Louis, Louis, you know, Louis Prima. Prima. Yeah, Keely Smith. You know mm-hmm. his wife. She was still alive, and at the time, this is you know this is like, I want to say like nineteen eighty nine, ninety or something. She was still alive and still playing, and I went to see her play, and I could just tell. Like that, my friends. When I was like, I'm not going to go to the strip club. I'm going to go see like a 70 year old jazz singer. Uh, I could just tell they were all like, "Yeah, he's gay. <laughs> he's, he is gay. It's it's happened. Showbiz has gotten to him." I love going to jazz shows. I went to my first live jazz show in a long time recently. I went to Seattle um, for my birthday. My friend invited me out to see Bob James. And I just, I mean, I love the theme from Taxi. And his <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yelling at him, Taxi! <laughs> you know, taxi he, again! Yeah, he knew what we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> he gave us Taxi at the end. He, he closed with Taxi. <laughs> but I really love the atmosphere of a jazz club. Hey, I just love live music, and, but sometimes I get a little self conscious when I go to rap shows because I feel like I'm the oldest person there. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. people are very aggressive. And I liked going to the jazz show because then I felt like the youngest person there. And people said things to me like, oh, oh, I smell reefer in that man. <laughs> I smell reef. Yeah, oh, we I have. Think even the old people would be getting high. You would think show. so. It yeah. was fun. I think he worked at uh, he worked at Boeing, so maybe he couldn't. <laughs> he could only be murdered. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't. Uh, I don't like going to concerts much at all 
anymore. Why? I just am old and crabby. Mm. I just still old and well, crabby. You were young and, and crabby. Yeah, but I I was less crabby. <laughs> I mean, it t- it really takes a really good show for me to. I, I mean, I'll go and I just kind of. I'm good for about. It's also my attention span so shitty and always has been shitty. I'm good for 45 minutes, and I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. I get it. You know, he, they I play music, love- and then I listened, and now I'm ready to go. You know? I like doing shows like that, though, where I'm like, I no longer feel committed to a full show. Sometimes I'll go to a show, and halfway through, I'll be like, I've had enough. Yeah. I'm good, and I'll leave now, and if I leave now, traffic won't be horrible. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's the best. If they, yeah. see, if they did a song that was my, if I heard my favorite song, I'm out. But yep. after that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I like, I think it's just a difference between when I had no money, then I'd be like, oh, I need to be here for every minute yeah. of this. But now I'm like, oh, I'll see another concert, so it's fine. Unless it's someone that, like Bob James, where I'm like, he could be dead in a few years, so I had to just go. I had to take a trip to go see him. Right. Um, I want to also say that I really appreciate um, when, I reach, uh, when I first got separated, you were one of the first people to really reach out to me and... Um, just check in on me and, and say kind words to me and also when you started um when you got um engaged i think you also reached out again and just kind of told me that you know things will get better and that you know even though it doesn't feel like it now that like love and things can come back into your life and that always um you're like one of three people where i was like seeing you and then recently now that bobcat goldthwaite got married where i'm just like oh okay like things can happen yeah it's fine it it, yeah it's it's uh yeah it it feels apocalyptic when i mean you know when it happens, I was married for 25 years and I never, and I especially like my, my mom was divorced twice and it was so like, it was so harmful to me. Uh, truly, you know, and I mean, I, it's not anybody's fault. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it affected me really deeply in like both of them in two different ways. Um, in ways it took years and years and years for me to even figure out and then kind of work on and get past. So I was just like, I'm not going to do that, which is dumb. You know, mm-hmm. like in retrospect, it's like, you don't know, you know, you don't know what, what life will bring. Um, but yeah, but I, I, I mean, I just, when I saw that was happening to you and I, it had been kind of fresh to me that I just wanted you, you know, I wanted you to know that like, cause it is, it, you just feel like you don't know, it's the scorched earth and you just don't it, it's hard to believe you know that that it can work and I, like i remember my sister i have a younger sister who who was divorced and i remember having a conversation with her after and she was like you know incredibly incredible just one of the most important people at that time but i mean my life generally but um she told me she was like, yeah, you know, she's like, you, it might take a while before you can really kind of even start serious. You know, you'll kind of probably need to be alone for a while before you can really start to even seriously open up to another person. It might be, you know, it might be three or four years. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking? Like, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm giving it two months. <laughs> you know? like, I, need to, I need love. I need to get back out there. I need love, and but you know she was right. I, you know it did. I needed to kind of go through being alone, and I, you know, and I, I, I dated, and I had you know nice people that I saw, you know, wonderful people that I saw, but just that weren't. It wasn't somebody that you know it wasn't like somebody that I was going to get married to, um, which is like I, I, you know, I don't even mean that, and like. It, it like the funny thing like I always find the funny thing about dating is like you meet people that like yeah I like you and I want to hang out with you and 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 you know and kind of you know I'll be your be your boyfriend and stuff but I mean we're not going to get married mm-hmm. I don't I don't think that that's like in the cards for us 
And you just think like, you know, yeah, come on, that's that makes sense. But then when you're like on the other end of it and there's somebody who's like, yeah, I like hanging out with you, but I mean, we're not going to get like serious together. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. What, you're not going to marry me? Fuck you, you know? And yeah. it, it's, you know, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, I met my wife and I, I did not expect, I did not expect uh didn't expect it. It snuck up on me, mm -hmm. you know. Fell in love, you know, and um, and then every it's like it's pretty great now, you know. If I could get some fucking work, <laughs> then it'd be even, <laughs> then things would be perfect. <laughs> Hello, Hollywood. <laughs> uh, I could get some work and afford the Ozempic <laughs> and, then, and get some more work. For fuck's sake. It's a deadly cycle. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I need work for the Ozempic, but they won't give me the work until I lose the weight. <laughs> but I'm not going to lose the weight without the shots. <laughs> How do you expect? I can't do that. I got to this point being this. Yeah. Come on. Nah. Well, Postmates is yeah. things. <laughs> exactly. Who come to you now? <laughs> You don't even gotta right. go to food. No, food come to exactly. us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about you? Are you? How is your? How, I mean, if I may ask about you your love ask. life, are you uh, seeing anybody? How's it been going? I just started seeing someone for about a couple months now. Nice. Um, and yeah, it's been the first time that um, I've been able to kind of be open. I still have. I think it's a you know and I'm not different. I don't want to say different at all, but it's, it's nice. It's been the first time where I've been fully open to be myself, and I told her what I'm going through, and she knows that I'm in the process of I'm not even divorced yet, and so to be fully open and to be like, look, I don't even really. I have some trust issues. I have some things going on. I'm going to be open. I'm still going to therapy. I'm not trying to put these things on you, but you need to know this about me if yeah. you want to pursue anything with me. Right. That I'm messy right now. Yeah. And I'm also fragile right now. And so if you're not nice and you don't want things like just just pass through. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um similar to what you talked about, um I have friends and I've also have um a long term tarot reader, Danny Sage. I love you, Danny. How are you? <laughs> and um they gave me a lot of advice about the same thing of like I've always been kind of a serial monogamous where I just jump from relationship to relationship and they were like, You need to be by yourself for a while, focus on you, work on your and just love will find you. Yeah. And um and it's a hard process of being lonely for a while and dragging myself to my jujitsu classes and cooking for myself and grilling for myself and really learning again, going to the concerts, kind of resetting. I think I compromised so many things about myself um, that I had to reset and be like, what do I like? Yeah. Who am I? Yeah. What do I enjoy since all, you know, um, a lot of those things I wasn't doing or slowly. And it's, it's like a slippery slope because you don't even really, I didn't even really notice. And then eventually I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't even go to concerts. And I don't think because she doesn't want to go to concerts. She doesn't dance. We don't take pictures because she doesn't want to take a picture. I like, like, it just all these things were like, oh, I'm very social. I'm very, th and I was n doing all the opposite of these things. Yeah. And so the, I needed time to fully reset and also go on dates with ladies. And um, I went on a date with this Broadway singer, and it was the first time where I was like, oh, man, I'm excited. Like, I enjoy you. We went mini golfing and, like, talked for, like, a couple hours. Um, but, like, just from our even our conversation, I knew, and in fact that she was a touring singer, and I was just like, oh, we're not this is just like a fling yeah. but it was very helpful in reminding me of like this is how excited i need to be yeah to want to pursue something with someone i need yeah. to want to spend time with them want to talk with them not get mad at them just because they're of their vocal fry um <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> when is this sentence gonna end um, <laughs> 
<laughs> my mind felt like it should have been three syllables ago. And you're dragging it out. Um, <laughs> but it's like what you said. It's not, I think, we always talk about, feel like it's such a rejection. Either we're rejecting or we're being rejected. When I think it's more like full chemistry, like, People match with each other and be able to chat with each other at this level where you're like, this is my friend also, and I also want to fuck them, and I also care about their day. Yeah. And you sometimes only get one out of three of those, you know? And so um, I went through a bunch of dating, and then I ended up meeting this lady that I'm seeing now, and we went on one date at this um, restaurant that sucked. And the food was terrible and the atmosphere was horrible. And we still talked for like an hour and a half and like laughed and made fun of it together. And um, and I was just like, oh, if this was anybody else, I would have been like, this was a complete waste of my time. Yeah, yeah. But I loved this day, even though it was shitty. And I was just like, oh, I think I like this lady. Yeah. And we've just been hanging out slowly but surely ever since. She's really cool. Um, and she's got a good job. And she's really kind. And she's just um, been really just, she's been a real godsend for me. Lately. Yeah. Yeah, she's been, um, yeah, the person I want to talk to. So Yeah, that that's, I mean, for me, the things, and I mean, like I, like I say, it snuck up on me. I'd be driving home from, my now wife's house because she she lived in uh, kind of Boyle Heights and I was living in Burbank and I would drive home from her house and like in the it's like in the morning and I'd be driving home and I just would be like I feel really happy mm -hmm. like I feel really good you mm -hmm. know and and I just would and I'd be like ah the air feels so you know, just to just you know, with and I, it wasn't like I was doing any even like, uh, you know, like because I can overthink the shit out of everything. Oh, you? you? Know? Yeah, I can. You know, like take inventory after inventory after what's going on and how is this going and what am I feeling and all this, and I just was like, I just felt good, and I just from like very early on realized like I am myself mm -hmm. like when i'm with her i am myself i do not feel any need to be anybody to, to do anything other than what i want to do uh i don't i'm not bored mm -hmm. you know because i mean that's the other thing is you can you, know, you spend time with people you just get bored with mm -hmm. them because you just don't connect and it's just like <sighs> okay you know and um and then the real kicker for me, too, was, um, and this isn't, you know, she, she didn't need me, mm. you know? Like, like I realized, like, she had a full, complete life. Like, she had, like, I just, I, I just, I was, like, just an added bonus to her life. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like there's all these big gaps that then I would come in and fill, you know, mm -hmm. like I would, I would be like stability or I would be, yeah. you know, like guidance or, you know, or, or, uh, or, you know, or, or finances or anything, you know, I mean, I just, she didn't need me, you know, she just liked me cause I was me, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, that's all changed now. She needs the shit out of me. <laughs> you know? And, and, you know, and, yeah, and it's really unhealthy now. Uh, no, but, I'm, but I mean, uh, yeah, that really mattered. You know, that was, like, really, um, like, I just really, it was just, like, really easy for me to not be, like, uh, uh, scared of going forward, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and it is. I do do think it's like, and it it does. I I did feel though, and I was kind of like, I was I was actually kind of glad that I got to this point that I felt like I might not get married again. Mm -hmm. You know, like I might just be, you know, because I had my kids, my two kids, and 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 I have a dog, and I was like, I might just. You know, and I, you know, living through COVID, 
You know, I was seeing somebody during COVID. But it was kind of on and off, you know. But I did just kind of feel like, no, I could do this, mm -hmm. you know. And I, because I didn't think I could. Mm -hmm. I thought, because I really am, like, I really am, like, a husband and a dad. Like, that's really where I live. Mm -hmm. And and so I, there was a part of me that was just like, I don't even know who the fuck I am outside of mm -hmm. being a husband and a dad. So how am I just going to be some guy living on his own, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I mean, I was still going to be a dad, but, it, you know, my kids are older. So it's like, yeah. you got to deal with that, you yeah. know? Yeah, and it changes the... Yeah, um, but I, I was like, I really had gotten to the point where like, no, I could do this. I could do this. I, and I'm glad that I don't have to, you know? I do prefer, I like, you know, I like, I like a partnership. I like having somebody there. I, li I like, you know, I like living with my best friend, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, 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 you know, and having a little kid is, I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but people, people act like, you know, like they act like, oh, wow you're like brave or like wow you're you know like what a what a sort of like mensch to to take on a little kid mm -hmm. again after you've already had kids and it's like are, are you kidding like i don't have to make a decision for another 16 years <laughs> like, you know like i've been i have i'm absolved of like having to figure out what the fuck to do with myself on a saturday mm. you know because there's like well you got to get up you first you got to feed her uh, and then you know yeah. and then and then yes that's a schedule yeah it's yeah. a schedule kind it's of like having in. a tamagotchi with heavy yeah, stakes exactly. real heavy stakes exactly um, <laughs> you know, and then there's ice skating class and then after you know and then yeah after that, you got to feed them you yeah know. no i love i mean similar to you i think for me the fact that i had malcolm when i was 20 really made it as he was getting older and you know he just turned 21 i was just like oh same thing all i know is being a dad i've been a dad the majority of my life right and so i was like oh i'm not done being a dad i, I don't think i'm ready to be done with that and when i was married and and thought that this was going to be my life i was like wow this can be beautiful i had my first son circumstances were so much more dire i had no money i was yeah. going around doing open mics and doing these shows and opening for natasha Legero and asking her to watch my son in the green room while i go <laughs> up and you know and it was a real struggle and scary and so i was just really looking forward to being like oh i have resources i have this i have my wife we'll have another kid and we'll um I'll go out and do shows and I'll come home and they'll both be here and I'll see him and he'll be like, hi, daddy. And I'm like, and I'll get all the things that I missed out on the first time by um, having what I thought was a more unconventional um, parenting with my oldest. And to then be like, oh, no, this isn't going to work. Like was like you said, like it was scorched earth because it changed so much of like what I thought was going to happen. And then all of a sudden I was like, Oh, I'm going to be a single dad again. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, well maybe we can at least be pretty good co-parents together and get along. And then I was like, Oh no. <laughs> oh really? Oh no. <laughs> and so it just became this thing of like, Oh, earth shattering for me where i was like oh my god how i feel like i'm in the exact same place i was when i was 20 yeah but now i'm 40 and the, and the positives of it or at least i was like well i have a nanny and i have these things and yeah. uh, um, you have money to throw at it yes yeah. and that's very helpful yeah. um but it really and by it i mean your child yeah i throw yeah, it yeah, yeah. that's what i call them <laughs> <laughs> Nanny calls, just throw some money at it. <laughs> he likes it when it hits him in the face. He's like... <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it was hard to 
wrap my mind around what was going to be my life now and it yeah. still is but now i still get the things that i wanted i still get the, instead of but instead of my uh, ex it's just you know my nanny's here and i come home from work and um it does make me more selective i have to take less jobs um and i just come home and he's like happy to see me and he runs up and gives me a kiss and i get all the same things and now i get to see the friendship between him and malcolm um and how much he looks up to him and how much he in just loves his big brother's approval how much yeah. a, a, what a high five from him means to him yeah like it yeah. makes his day and it, and is malcolm does it enrich him too? it really has i bet it, it has made yeah. him like it like just kind of flipped a switch in him where he's like oh i'm an adult yeah i'm a big brother and i yeah. need to look out for my little brother yeah. and he does it so well yeah he looks after every time i feed him he's helping clean up after him he um one time you know doing a little bit of potty training and teddy pooped on the floor and i went upstairs to give him a bath i come back downstairs I'm like i got clean up this poop and he had already taken care of it. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't know many 21-year-old kids who would just be like, all right, I'm going to pick up my little brother's I'm going to clean up this shit on yeah, yeah. I would have been like, no, you you made that kid. Yeah, yeah. That's your poop. <laughs> I'm going to another room where it doesn't smell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he's really, like, just leveled up as a... Um, and, individual and now all these things like he wants to go to um he wants to also go to to uh he wants to go to ucla for there's this pathways program yeah and just we went and did a tour and he just comes out and he's wearing his ucla sweater and he's got a hat on and i'm just like man all right yeah this is happening that's great. <laughs> yeah it's great yeah so it's been real beautiful and the um, it's kind of, I guess, the opposite where I was just like the work in my own individual life has been pulling me through and being able to work like Maya, um, has been a really, um, you know, cause I basically got separated in November, October, November, and then had to go back to work in January. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I can't, I won't be able to think about it. I'll have to focus on my work and stuff. But then I was like, oh, I forget all the like being what, you know, being, and it's a great set and being on set is fun. But yeah. even on set, there's all these little things and a little emotional battles or you hear overhear something that like you're just like, oh, why they say that? You know, and you just have to steal yourself from that and then just do your work. But I had no patience for anything oh, yeah, yeah so if i heard some like thing and it, and it made me mad or uh, a note that i didn't agree with <laughs> <laughs> nope <laughs> you got anyone to do another run you want to improvise something? no we got it <laughs> <laughs> and i was lucky that maya was there to kind of like She'd have these little fireside chats with me and just check in on me. And because, like, you know, I don't really get into it a lot. And then a lot of people either assume that, like, okay, you guys are fine together or things are copacetic. And then for her to be like, how are you? And where are you? It made me, um, you know, it was the only way I was able to survive that thing, really. But yeah. I'm doing much better now. Yeah. When I, I, when I split with my wife and then because the Conan we we're still doing the Conan show at Warner Brothers and I there was like times I was like a fucking wild man I felt like it just and like just like moments where I just moments and I mean and I'm not you but like like I just remember like there was one in a monologue meeting I was complaining about about my mom and uh and like one of the one of the people that's been there forever and then I was like a family member to me started to like take my mom's side and I just was like I was I mean I was just like what the fuck are you talking about like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about you know and I mean I would never do that you know mm -hmm. but you know or just you know we were recording podcasts and I remember there was one podcast that I did that was kind of about the show that 
I had just had a therapy session because I do therapy by phone because I've had the same therapist for a million years and who needs in New York. And I was in my office, I had my therapy session. And like 15 minutes later, I'm up in this, the podcast studio doing a podcast. And I just was like, I just remember just like just saying shit like being way too honest about mm -hmm. like just my history with the show and stuff like just like you know and i mean by honest i'd mean like you know like the way you talk about family yeah but you know you you know yeah if you're talking to people you don't know that well you know you'd, you'd keep it you know close to your vest but like this i was just like spilling my guts and felt like oh my god i said way too much um but it's just because you're just like a raw wound, you know? Mm -hmm. And like when something you said, and it was one of the striking things to me that was that was so, because it was just like the, the ending my marriage, it was just like, an, like a, a beautiful like shit blossom that just kept unfolding and unfolding. There would be like new aspects to the hurt and the and and one of the things that just killed me what, that I didn't I hadn't even thought of was like it was the death of a future like my future I had a picture of my future that was there for years like it you know it, it and it evolved but I mean I, I was with somebody for 27 years married for 25 so you get this picture of like well this is what our future is going to be and then, and you just, it's in your head and it's in, and it's like, well, this is where I'm going. And you can see like almost all the way to the grave, you know, mm -hmm. like this is what my life is going to be. And then, no, nope, it isn't. And you know, what the, you, you just are completely unanchored. You're like, I, I don't know what anything is anymore, yeah. you know? So, um, but yeah, but so so many lessons in that. Because yeah. Oh that yeah, is, yeah. That is the honest truth. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and yeah, it's like, yep, that's what happens. And then, yep, you just kind of, you gotta, like, it's like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's the death of a future, sure. And then yeah. you fucking make a new one, you know. Yeah. And also, and also that new one too. The thing, I guess, the thing to learn is like, well, you you you, you don't really know. Yeah. You know, so like even the new future that you might think you're heading towards and that you might build, you don't know. So stay open, you know. Yeah. Stay I... open is a big, big thing, you know, even and just in life. I mean, forget about being divorced or anything. There's so many old people I know that they, they just close up and get more and more closed and more and more scared. And I just am like, oh, I just don't want to do that. I just. Mm. I don't want to be that kind of old person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I just don't want to be that type of person in general. Yeah. And I think that was a big part of the being alone and working through things. So I was like, I don't, the last thing I want to do is be like bitter and be walking around yeah. being like, oh, you can't trust women. And you, and then, and then. like, yeah, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to be like that because what I had to always, what I had to remind myself, I was like, oh, most of the good people in my life, most of the people who've helped propel me forward, most of the people who've had my back have been women. Yeah. And so, and even going through this, there's been a lot of women who've had my back and supported me and pushed me and made me feel good. And so I had have to look at that because i think it's easy to just be like oh well like this doesn't work i'm divorced twice and they and you know and feel betrayed and feel like same thing where you're like i can't trust other people and i can't trust myself um but i think overall what i've learned through therapy is that what got me in a bad situation it was not trusting myself was not mm -hmm. looking at these things where i would go huh that's weird huh, if you really love me as much as you say you do, would you do that? Would you act like that? Would you have said like that? Would you have looked at me like that? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh, well, you know, bad day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, it's, hard, it's hard to look back on your life after you've made that kind of decision and not just look and go like, you know, like, God damn! I just see mistake after mistake after mistake, and and it. I I, I mean I don't want to look at 
back yeah. at my life like that. You yeah. Know? Um, but yeah, there was like, I definitely, there were, you know, like you say, there was, there's a lot of like, I shouldn't have let that happen. I should have done something more about that. You know, and th when that happened, uh, I, I should have stuck up for myself or I should have, I should have said, you know what? I don't like that. And I, I would, I, we should talk about that and we should do something about that. You know, and, uh, but you just don't do it again. You know, mm -hmm. don't, I, one friend of mine, it's like <laughs> my a friend of mine once when I was, I was like, this is years ago, years ago, my friend Tommy Blatchett. You know Tommy? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, do. yeah. Yeah, Tommy and I. It was we were in. It was what, we were in Chicago. We were barely out of film school, I think. And I just was having like some kind of woman problem, and just doing dumb shit over and over and over. That you know, making mistake after mistake with the same person. And uh, he's like, "Well, don't do that." And it was just, it was so dumb because it was like if he'd said it the day before it wouldn't have meant anything. But like at mm -hmm. the time I was like, yeah, it is kind of that simple, isn't it? It's yeah. like, yeah, don't do that, you know. Yeah. Like I'm sitting here going, well, I did this, and then it would, you know, like I put my hand on the stove and it burnt my hand. Yeah. It's like, well, don't do that. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, it's good to have good friends. Like yeah, yeah. yeah I saw my friend Lauren who was in Portland, and she actually. Um, when I had my first divorce, she kind of helped me in like uh, spiritually, friendship wise, and sexually. Uh, <laughs> well, Tommy didn't do just kind of. God damn it! Oh yeah, Tommy's not good enough friend. Mm. But she basically was like, you know, I'd been married for so long, and she was like, "We're gonna get you back into the single world through a kind person who enjoys you." I'm not gonna be here with you forever. Yeah, but I'm gonna be nice to you, and we're gonna go on dates, and we're gonna get your confidence back up. Oh, that's and, nice. Uh, and so. And we've been friends ever since. And every time I go to Portland, we have lunch and hang out and like nothing ever sexually. We just kind of are friends. Yeah. And I saw her this last time I was in Portland and I told her what was going on. And I and she asked me about, you know, went to more details about everything. And and same thing. It was just like this person had known me forever. And this, all she said was like, she's like, when are you going to realize who you are? Like, well, if you know who you are and how good you are and how I view you and how other people view you, you wouldn't put up with these type of things. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you just need to know. She's like, you're too good to do that. Yeah. And it was just like hearing someone where it was both painful to hear that because it was like, why don't I see that in me? Yeah. And then also just beautiful to be like, oh, she's abs. All it was is not me. Not understanding who i am and understanding my value yeah and that i think i'm very lucky that a my son was so young that when this happened that i'm still young that i can go and still hopefully make money and um you know handle providing for both households and that uh is a lesson that i would much rather get now than have been like you know find out when i'm 60 or yeah, something yeah. you know because i was like oh we gotta do this because i'll stay here for our kids and the, and because i don't think it would have changed anything you know it yeah just yeah. made it must made it worse yeah yeah although i mean if it happened it fell apart that quick i think yeah oh yeah, yeah. right yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think like it fell apart when yeah was supposed to yeah it makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah. my mom will make it because i'll be like oh, she'll just be like i have underwear older than your relationship <laughs> 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 or my favorite one was she's like i went through cancer longer than you guys <laughs> <laughs> Like, God damn. Uh, All right. I guess I'll like, shut up. Sounds like you, should, you should buy your mom some new underwear. <laughs> that's what she's dropping a hint for that. Yeah, that's what she wants. Yeah. I need she, new drawers. She, <laughs> <laughs> she wants that Fenty. <laughs> um, so work-wise, you, you, you do your podcast. What else are you doing? And why are you mad about work? <laughs> Well, I mean, everybody's mad about. Well, yeah, work. there's not much work. There's not a lot, a lot of work. You know, you just, you know, open my email and there's a 
article like writers are not okay like mm -hmm. okay and it's like well if the writers aren't okay but it's just it's everywhere you know like i my chiropractor's in burbank and his whole practice is crew people mm. and he's like telling me people that never stop working their phones aren't ringing mm -hmm. you know and uh and it's also it also is like it's coincide it's like it's a bad time but it's also like i came off of being 11 years on the conan show kind of on conan island you know i mean like i wasn't like i had a steady gig and it was you know it was it kept me busy and i did some stuff on the side but it wasn't like you know i mean i had I had my i had life i had family i you know um but and also too another thing is like i am not a good like you know i'm just not like an entre like a showbiz entrepreneur mm -hmm. you know like I, I like i'll pitch things and i'll come up with ideas but like i know people that can't not be coming up with shit mm -hmm. like they're always like i gotta do this and i gotta do this and you know i'm gonna be directing this and i'm and i just you know i don't know you know it's like I, i'm like i yeah i guess i could write a screenplay or i could make a nice dinner <laughs> <You know? laughs> or you know i could um, hang that ceiling fan you know i mean mm -hmm. i just i just am not kind of like i said it the other day i was at i was hosting somebody else's podcast this live thing and somebody asked like about oh the love it or leave it no Is it was an, it was another one it was like this food one and oh, somebody food. called a sporkful and it was a okay. live book re release thing and um, somebody in the audience asked, like, about, like, you know, like, how do you follow your artistic vision? And I was like, ah, for, well, you know what? I don't really have one. I was like, I was like, I'm a collaborator. I like to, I get into situations with other people. And, uh, you know, I'm an improviser. I'm not a stand-up. I like to be with people. And then we make something, mm -hmm. you know. So that is great and i and it's the way i work but when you're not working it's it doesn't work out great you know mm -hmm. it's like it's like i'm i only can do violence in a gang so it's like <laughs> I, I, i'm not yeah. a good hitman yeah you know? no i like doing my dirt all by my lonely uh, yeah i know i know that's <laughs> I, and it's a very it's a very fundamental difference between some people that's just how they you know it's what they like to do and i understand liking to have that kind of control mm -hmm. certainly but it's just, it's never, and I mean, I've tried doing stand-up, but I just don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't care about an audience. I care about the people, mm. you know, that, that I'm doing it with. Mm. Like, that's, like, that for me feels, like, that's the, that's the charge I get out of making, making other funny people laugh. Mm -hmm. Like, I always would say, like, on the Conan show, I always would my favorite laughs would be like when I could see the cameramen were yeah. laughing, you know? Oh yeah. Cause they don't laugh at yeah. much. You know, they've seen everything, but yeah. if you can make them laugh, it's like, Oh, that's a tough nut to crack right there. Yeah. Well, you get that in stand up. It's like the security guard. Right. Exactly. The, yeah. Yeah. When I went to the cellar and they had the piano guy and when the piano guy was laughing, I was like, Oh hell yeah. You're here all night. Right. You, right. Yeah. You're laughing. Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah. Makes you feel good. Yeah. The right laughs make you yeah. feel good. Yeah, but yeah. So no, I mean I'm podcasting, which is fun. You know what I mean. And I kind of have um, on the job learned how to interview people, mm -hmm. um, which I feel you know, and I feel like I do a good job of it. It wasn't anything that I really knew how to do, and then I just did a bunch of it. And I'm sure you kind of feel the same way. It's like you sit and you do this, and time you get better at it. You know you're getting better at it. You yeah. know that like. Uh, you know that that's the name of the show. Is it's still good? Yeah, there it is. We haven't changed. Uh, so and I mean, and that's good. You know, I like that. I like that that I have that skill now. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but I just I do miss acting. Like there's just like not and I and you know I'll audition for things and and it, like I say about being on Conan Island, I'll get I get the, I get like these notes that I got like 20 years ago. When I came out here to, you know, after I left the Conan show the first time and, and came out here and 
you know, just like lots of notes, like, hey, you can act. Mm. And just feeling like, well, yeah, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, I kind of, yeah. That's, I, yeah, no, you know. yeah. I think I relate to that and just that my career is like a full balance of a lot of things and none of it is usually under my control whatsoever it's like really fun because i'm on the show with maya and it's like a prestige apple show that i get to go do fun stuff and like got to be on good morning america and like um go to these fyc events and everybody's all like oh it's great and the show's great and I hope you guys are excited and maybe you see you guys at the emmys da, da, da. and then i go to appleton wisconsin and my second show has 25 people <laughs> you know and i'm yeah, just like yeah. what which one of these is true right <laughs> like, what well, is they're all kind of, yeah it's all kind of true you know yeah it is all kind of true and it yeah. is why i like doing a mix of things because whenever i feel frustrated in one area i can kind of bounce around the other and usually it's weird because right now i think i'm most frustrated with stand-up um i love stand-up and i enjoy it and i feel like i'm getting really good at it but i also um since most of that my material is always life-based i'm talking a lot about my divorce and stuff i don't feel like clubs are feeling like the best atmosphere for that right when right. people show up for i mean i had to show up for a full bachelorette party of 20 people and i was like you know, i go you know i'm about to talk about getting divorced for like an hour <laughs> Oops. Oops. yeah so put down the dildo <laughs> Oh man! Well, are you thinking about like changing the kind of venues that you're doing? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Trying to just do small theaters and bet on myself a bit, but also right now while I'm going to court a lot, I need the guarantees that oh, a yeah, yeah. that a comedy club can provide. So um, I'm eyeing my future, but at the same time, just being like, this is where I am right now, and this is fine. I'll do these five shows in Appleton. And, I mean. I mean, again, that's a difference. Like the Thursday late show or Friday late show, twenty people, and then Saturday early show sold out. So it's just yeah. like I have to just embrace what is, and because I can't just act. Because the same thing, I hated the rejection so much. And oh yeah, the same thing where people are like, "Oh wow, you're actually good." I'm like, "Yeah, I know. I still go to class. Yeah, I still like I love this. I love it. I do too." And so when you know, ugh, even I had some indie film where um, my manager was like, "Oh well, they want to cast and wanted them to offer it to you, but the director doesn't know you at all, so he wants you to audition." And then I read the script, and it's one of the most god awful things I ever read in my life, and I'm like. Why would I? Why do I? You want me to prove myself to you? Your script sucks, dick. Yeah, like, yeah. why? Why? I'm on shows. Like, go watch loot, and you can see I can act. And, and so it gets frustrating. Oh boy, does it? <laughs> no, I, I, I. No, it's 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 infuriating sometimes when you go in. And especially when you got, well, I mean, for a no, you don't even fucking audition in front of people anymore. Mm -hmm. It's all putting yourself on tape, which or zoom in or yeah, I, on I, tape I hate because then they want you to do every fucking scene in the whole script. And and also it's like then you gotta get someone to read with you, you know, which is like, uh, um, like I would have my wife do it, but she's terrible at it because she always like. I'll say my line, or she'll say a line, I'll say my line, and then I realize, like, she's reading the screen direction. <laughs> and I'll be like, no, don't, just say the line. Just read the part that I highlighted for you. And she'll go, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, you know, like, what do you think we should do about this case? And I'll go, well, I'll tell you what we should do. We should fire the guy. Yes, we should. <laughs> I love her, but I just, you know. But yeah, no, it's, and it's just, it's frustrating too, because then it's like, edit them all into one take, and I, and it's like, I shouldn't have to be fucking editing. Yeah. My, oh. Uh, oh, if you know how to edit, you're crushing it in I, comedy right now. You're probably making the most money, I'm, like a producer in hip hop. No, I know. It's crazy. It's yeah. like, wait, I have to cut these 
together. Yeah, podcast. To you. Uh, for me, stand up clips, all this stuff. Yeah. You, you got to push all your stuff because they want more bet on your, your fan base and skills instead of help being a, developing and helping you and put. Oh. Uh, you know what I'm saying. Oh, I know. It's uh, no, the whole, it's now. I, the thing, the latest one that was driving me nuts is that I was I was going around and a friend of mine and I had a, a, another podcast idea, and we're talking to all these different podcast companies, and they're like, uh, you know, we'll give you this minimum guarantee of money, but um, you have to make you have to get like sixty thousand uploads per per episode. Uh, or you're not going to make that guarantee. You'll just make the split of the ad money. And it's like, wait, so we got to make the show and then make sure that we have listeners? Like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Like, why is it, um, it's my job to go fucking, it, it's like if they, you know, like, oh, you know, Gary Marshall, we're going to do happy days, but you got to go door to door and get people to watch. Yeah. Like, no, I, I got to, you know, it's, it, I, and I and the, it's just it's everywhere. It's like it's just that's just the way it is. It's like well, if you don't want to do it, then don't fucking do it. Yeah. You know? No, it's a wild time to where you got to wear so many hats in entertainment. Which I guess is also old school vaudeville style, which I do enjoy a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I don't mind. I'm not bitching about the fact about being able to do different stuff because, like, you know, I think you do animation voices mm -hmm. too. Like being able to do cartoon voices, and then I've also done like a lot of game show hosting. Yeah, and so I love both those. Things I, so yeah, I much. still have like yeah. It's like it's like you fucking... feel more like my competition. Now. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, me and Rob Lowe are yeah, your, are your Rob's you know, yeah, yeah, you're like we lost game show, Rob. your game show hosting competition. <laughs> uh, no, I and mean, now the, Travis Kelsey. Is Travis Kelsey hosting a game show? He's hosting the reboot of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. Oh, boy. He's great. He's great in it. I'm on it. Uh, he's <laughs> oh, are you? Are you? <laughs> no, I like, really I like him. I like him. He's actually really But good. it is just like, you know, like, the you know, a number of years ago, I was like, oh, I'm getting into game show hosting, and they're they're taking me seriously like a game show host. And I fucking love it, because I love game shows, and I'm serious about it, and I've had gigs where they're like, oh, the game part doesn't matter. We're here for the jokes. And I'm like, fuck that. Yeah. No, it's a game show. If the game yeah. show doesn't matter, the I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to do it. Like yeah, it's just air. Yeah, like then it's not a game show, and I don't, you know. But um, but it's like now it's just like wait, movie stars are hosting game shows and football players, and, you know. No, and Michael Strahan has too many fucking jobs. Yeah, he does. Jesus Christ, Michael, focus on your clothing. Yeah, you're doing good job for right, big right. man in clothing. <laughs> Just focus on that. Yeah, yeah. Let us work. Yeah. Let us, those who just have charm and not the body of a <laughs> Greek guy, let us have something, Michael yeah. Strahan. Come on. Leave a little for us. us. Do you shave your legs? Your legs are so. No, I'm, I, I was never that hairy. And as I've gotten older, I'm 57 now, the hair has just flown off my body. That's so wild. Yeah, no, they're just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I thought you like I was like oh he's definitely a drag queen at no because no. those are some no and I have I never, like gam no there's like and I'll get like fucking guys that I obviously like recognize me say like like what do you shave your fucking legs mm -hmm. and I just and I'm like yeah yeah I do because I like fucking assholes asking me about it you yeah know? not you no but, you yeah know. I mean I meant I was just genuinely yeah, yeah. curious no no I, I know like, I'm a very a swimmer. it's just no I'm a swimmer <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a floater uh, <laughs> uh, no I just I'm just it's my genetics I just, and I got the baby face you know mm -hmm. I got I can if I don't shave for a month it just looks like i'm just starting you know rabbinical school <laughs> um, i can't grow a real beard you know yeah nah you know you look like a full dad you certainly have full dad vibe yeah yeah I well I, did, I had the shorts on i ran over here yeah know, so. from after the, from the grill yeah <laughs> no well from the pressure cooker i was <laughs> making beans <laughs> 
I was actually. I was. It got. To, I got to a point, and I was like, "Oh shit, I gotta go. You better. You better take care of those pressure cooker beans." <laughs> I'm, I'm no curious pressure. when I get That's home. That's a bad joke. Yeah, thank you. How they were. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you laughed at that. <laughs> He's here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what are you? What, what would be your goals right now? It feels that you have. Such a good rebound for you because I remember how you weren't, um, you were very sad and not doing well yeah. from the divorce, and rightfully so. And then, because obviously, I know I now right there with you yeah. or where you were. Um, and so to be where you are now, I imagine you're incredibly grateful and happy, but you said also you have these, um, you know, you still want to work and stuff. What do you? What would you want to do? What are your goals? What are you interested in? Uh, well, I, I have been, it's, it is, it's really strange because like I say, I could definitely, I, I need more work, you know, and it's just a straight up, I'm on, you know, there's no, I don't feel like there's any shame in it, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I had a, I had a real good steady job there for a while and i was okay for a while but it's been a while you know mm -hmm. and i mean i'm doing i i certainly live a better life than many many people who re have real hardship so i don't you know but just in relative terms it's a little sweaty you know mm -hmm. and it is kind of like you know it, you, it is a it, it is a little bit kind of you know job to job you know mm -hmm. like just grabbing on to the next thing and the next thing and just to keep the lights on and keep everything moving but on the other hand i have been finding like i have been finding that i i have spent a lot of a lot of time in my life feeling like i wasn't doing enough and feeling like i wasn't you know, like I wasn't doing my homework or something or that like I wasn't, um, the, 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 you know, that I went, I went, I basically, I just, I wasn't doing enough and that, and that one of these days I was going to get around to kind of living up to my full potential, you know, like, and, and, and I, I mean, I'm talking about, I'm, I got a job, I got a kids, I'm raised, you know, but I still in me was like, well, I haven't really started to apply myself yet, mm. you know. Um, and I always felt like, like I said, like I'm not doing enough. Like I always felt like there was always a voice in me that was like, kind of felt like, like the way I felt through college, which was getting decent grades, but I could have done better if mm -hmm. I had just applied myself, you know, that whole thing. And I have found like recently because i still especially like worrying about money and worrying you know when you when you do what i do and there isn't like a lot of acting work coming then the next thing is like well what am i going to generate like mm -hmm. okay i'll pitch a animated show or i'll pitch a game show or i'll pit you know i'll pitch this and i'll pitch that and then the market is different so you got to figure out where you can and and i kind of <laughs> lately have just kind of I haven't been worried that much about it. You know, I just kind of, I've been doing stuff like we bought an old house that is, needs renovating. And I was intensely aware when I bought this old house, like, don't let this old house distract me from the work that I need to do that actually brings in money. Um, but like, you know, we just, we're been, we've been putting in a vegetable garden in the backyard. And I have just been finding myself getting to the end of a day where I, took care of my daughter and I put in the vegetable garden and cooked and I mean, read a book or something. And maybe did, you know, also did like some podcast stuff or, you know, an audition or something, but getting to the end of the day and not feeling like I didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. I just, I feel like, and I've just been having this like sneaking suspicion that like, 
I think I might be just like living my life. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That sounds beautiful. It's really nice. It's That's really real nice. Work. That's real work. Yeah. And it's like I wake up and then my day is filled with stuff. And then I go to bed and I feel, and then it's like, I don't feel like, oh, I, I got a pile of homework that I didn't do, mm. you know? And, um, and it's, you know, it's only, it's only taken 57 years to get here, but I really want to try and keep that feeling of just like the, like what I'm like, um, you know, just all that old in the present and in the now and like, and I'm living the life that I should live and I'm. And all that shit about I'm not doing enough, that's all, that was all me anyway. There's nobody out there going like, hey, lazy, get to work. It's just me, you know? And, and, uh, and, but the difference is, is that I've been, I've been feeling it. You know, I've been, I've been feeling enough. Mm. I've been feeling like I'm doing enough. I've been feeling like I'm enough and mm. that my life is enough. And, um, and it's really great, you know? I love that. Yeah. Sounds like you're content. I I am. I am. You know? I mean, I, I got to... I mean, there's a lot I could do better, but, you know. But still. Yeah. Well, why? Uh, <laughs> no, just, I, you know. And I, I don't want to... Because I... Cause it, I uh, there's, I also want to, there's also room for improvement. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm satisfied, but it's like, yeah, but you know, I'm not, I'm not being too hard on myself, but that is still, there is still like some oh, stuff. Oh, I think yeah. that's the sweet spot to be in. Yeah, I think so I mean, too. that's why I, I go, I love my life. If it didn't change in any meaningful, big way, money-wise and stuff, I still love my life and enjoy where I am with my career and everything. Um, but I will work hard to move forward if case yeah. things will happen. Right, right. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the best place to be. Yeah. But it's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. You don't you think there's better places? No. I just should do some more stretching. Yeah, stretch. Yeah, I gotta just do more think stretching. Think about Pilates. I've been doing Pilates. Yeah, I used to do Pilates. It's yeah. fun. I mean, it's actually horrible, but right, at, the right, end, right. at the end, when my when I'm laying in bed and something cracks and feels good, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Oh, I, I know, yeah, yeah, that's bad. Yeah. No, I just with putting in the uh, vegetable garden, I have really, you know, like you go for a long time and then you don't do a uh, farm work, mm -hmm. and then you do uh, farm work for a couple of weeks straight. I don't, no, I don't oh, understand it's, that. It's, I don't. It's, understand it's, any part of that it, it, where, it, where uh, would i have started farm work to quit farm work <laughs> it's you know we are gonna we're gonna have some vegetables you know at the end of it so no i like that yeah. anything you're excited about any particular I, veggie uh no just well the tomatoes the tomatoes are always there that's the yeah that's the a real. good tomato from your oh man come on it's the best regular tomatoes trash it's the best to chat just yeah, a yeah. water bag of trash oh, is a store tomato garbage yeah garbage yeah. yeah it's horrible yeah yeah i like going to farmer's market as well that's oh the farmer's thing. market is the best yeah the studio city farmer's market on a sunday yeah yeah going to birch foods shout out to birch and you guys make great olive oils love your smoke smoked um olives that you do in the olive oil love them they're the best yeah yeah you gotta go hmm. jordan and russ okay they're pretty nice all right i often confuse which one is which and then i feel bad for the rest of the day. <laughs> hello jordan and rush <laughs> <laughs> there's only one of us here today <laughs> i know i'm just covering my bets <laughs> last thing i'll ask you so you can get back to your beans uh <laughs> it's just for a piece of advice a pearl of wisdom something maybe helped you recently or the last few years or through your separation or now your marriage or something from your childhood I, whatever you comes to mind um well the one um uh patience is really handy and you got to work at patience like patience uh sucks working at patience sucks but it's really nice if you got it you know um 
and then the one the one thing that I then I still uh, that I figured out a few years ago is and it's kind of going back to what we talked about at the beginning uh, in terms of people you, you know people that were mean to me I would think fuck them I don't, I'm not doing anything for them and I started to think about the way that I talk to myself and after spending years and years and years of talking really shitty to myself I thought why would I do anything for that guy mm. that guy talks to me like I'm garbage and so I thought maybe I should talk to myself more nicely and I might actually listen to myself and I might, you know, like rather than, Hey, you fucking lazy piece of shit. Maybe like, Hey babe, I love you, but you could do better. And I believe you can, you know, like, mm. and then I might do it then. Yeah. Cause the guy that's, that's telling me I'm garbage, like, not do anything for that asshole, no, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love this advice. One of my favorites because I'm a big believer in self talk. And I think that negative self talk is um, so damaging to us. And it's something that I don't try to do for myself. And it's something that I don't accept in a partner either. If, because I like, if you tell me you're trash, I believe you. Yeah. You, and also, if you like, if I think you're great and you tell me you suck, you're telling me I'm wrong. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I yeah. Mean, you know you more than me, right? Yeah. So I'll believe you. And you're also insulting my friend. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so saying, and I have also am a big believer that our our, our minds shape our reality. Um, um, one of my wild things is like, I'm, heaven and hell to me exist if you believe in them. Yeah. If you believe in your mind, believes in them so much, then if you die, then your your mind might send you to wherever you feel you truly belong. Um, and so I also believe that. If you talk negatively about yourself that much, you are shaping that reality. If you tell yourself you can't, then you can't. If you tell yourself you can, then it is possible, more likely. And even if you don't make it, just being sweet to yourself and kind to yourself. And I'm not perfect at it, anything, especially when it comes to food. Food is where I can really be like, oh, you fat piece of shit. Yeah, Why yeah. are you waking up covered in gummy bear wrappers again? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Welch's got us again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that learning, and I mean, one reason I see my nutritionist and go to my therapist is learning to just be like, one of my best things I can do is, like I said, practice patience. Is the just when I feel because when I do go for those fruits and extra stuff, it's usually this antsy thing of me being frustrated about something, me being like, oh, fuck it, me, I failed at this audition, fuck it, I'm not getting it, so I might as well eat candy and just taking a moment to stop and just deciding what I really want with the real issue now. Like, like, a, like when you have to stop your kid from having a tantrum, just be yeah. like, what is the real issue here? Are you tired? Yeah. Are you actually hungry? Or do you just need a little attention? What do you really need to, uh, to address the real problem as opposed to just appeasing this thing that just starts this shame cycle for me? Yeah. And even like being, it's one of my difficulties and battles on the road that I want to do with the theaters is that I feel like the more I go to the clubs and I'm in these cities for like three days, five shows that I end up just eating poorly and like yeah. missing jujitsu, missing Pilates. And it really now is this thing where I'm like, those things are starting to feel more important to me yeah. than the f five shows. Like I would be like, oh, I'd rather do a set at the laugh factory for a hundred dollars or $15 or whatever and stay on my goals. Yeah. Then go out and make more money and, um, fall off of my pattern. Right. But right now it just, again, it's difficult not to turn down the money when I'm like, okay, I gotta travel so hard. Too. Yeah. It feels like, well, I'm, I'm in Atlanta and they're the, nutritional rules are different here yeah you know yeah uh. yeah and also i mean when you travel a lot you really start to learn like wow there's really food deserts are real real oh they sure are places. yeah yeah and, you know i went to the place and i was like i like was trying to be good because it's like oh i have a microwave i have a fridge let's go to a whole foods we'll get some things and they're like we don't have whole foods yeah, I know. and i was like ah oh, fuck you yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> No. 
do you want? Broccoli with cheese covered, beer oh, cheese covered yeah. all over it? <laughs> Sounds like someone was in Appleton, Wisconsin. Yeah, it was eating curds. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, I one of my best things in my life and my surprising things in my life to me, um, and one of my biggest goals was to be on Conan show and to come out of that to have you as a friend of mine and to be able to talk to you and um in a way where it just feels like I talk to a friend and um that you've shown so much um, care for me and enjoyment and my success and just my comedy um, is one of the things that means the most to me and I really appreciate you. Oh, thank you, Ron. Of course. No, I, I from the first time I saw you, I just could tell like that you. I just loved you and I still love you and I just think you're a wonderful person and uh, and uh, it's easy to be nice to you. So yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys for listening. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out our last episode right over here. Bam. Or perhaps a video picked by our overlords at YouTube. Boop. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit it up. Hit it up. Press the button. Press it. <laughs>